Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I want to talk about streams. And no, I don't mean Netflix streams or watching Stranger Things, which I'm finally getting around to actually. I'm actually talking about streams on the Linux terminal in our Bash shell. We actually have some more advanced knowledge that's relative to input and output redirection. And that's what we're going to be covering in this video is the concept of streams on our shell. So let's go ahead and switch over to my laptop and we'll get started. Okay, so here we are on my terminal. And I want to go ahead and cover the concept of streams, but I just, I'm just going to revisit a couple of the things that we went over in the previous video. So just to recap, if I do ls, I don't have any files here. You can see that I have these directories. And, and I showed you in a previous video how to take the output of a command and capture it into a file, which this is a pretty lame example, but basically that just shows the concept. I basically am using the ls command and I'm capturing that into a file, which you already know because you watched the previous video. But then we could also redirect output from one command as the input to another command. So I could simply grep for do and it shows those two items because when you look at the contents of my working directory, I do in fact have two items that start with that. So you already know all that because you watched the previous video. So what exactly is happening here? So what I wanna to talk to you about is the concept of streams because there's three different streams that are important to know in Linux. There's standard input, standard output, and standard error. Now, the reason why these are important is because when you're writing programs or anything like that, sometimes you want the command to behave differently when it experiences errors than you would with just generic output. Now, standard output is the easiest stream to understand. There's standard output, just like that. Any command you enter on the terminal that produces output is actually standard output. Anything that actually gives you a response. So ls, you know, like I just did, that's standard output. If I do cat file.txt to see the contents, the contents of that file are being delivered through standard output. So basically anything that returns information that is then presented on the screen is standard output. So what is standard error? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to list the contents of the directory uh, turtles which is in my current working directory, except there isn't a directory called turtles. Now, what's happening here is I do see standard output, it's giving me output, but this is actually standard error because it's actually an error. So I'm gonna give you guys a example that I feel is pretty easy, will help drive this home. So I'm gonna use the ls command, I'll use dash l, because that's just habit at this point. And then I'm going to give it the directory slash home slash J. I am in that directory because the tilde is shorthand for your home directory. My home directory slash home slash J. There's a reason I'm doing that anyway. I'll just press enter. I'm just trying to show a fully qualified command here. And it's, it's a successful command. There were no errors. It gave me the results of that directory. So what happens if I run the echo command? I haven't gone over this command. I probably should have. But effectively what echo is going to do is, actually, is just echo something. You could put a string here in quotes and you could echo hello in quotation marks and it'll do it. But what I actually want to do is echo the dollar sign and then question mark. What the heck is that? Well, I'll get to that in a minute, but let's see what happens. I get a zero. What is a zero? So what echo is going to do when you're giving it a variable, I'll go over variables in a different video, but essentially dollar sign question mark is a special variable that includes the exit code of the previous command. If the command was successful, it's a zero. So let's see what happens then if I do ls turtles, a non-existent directory. Okay, well we got standard error. That is an error, there's no such directory. So let's try that again. I just press the up arrow a couple times, echo, dollar sign, question mark. We get a two. Technically, anything that's not zero is an error. An, out, an exit code of zero is a success. It, it was good. Uh, it's basically, if I wanted to write a program to react to a failure and say, hey, if there's uh, an error or the exit code is non-zero or it's standard error, I could basically manipulate it different ways. So that's basically to show you why this is actually important. 
We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but before we do, I just wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. Setting up your Linux cloud servers or Linodes is quick and easy with their intuitive cloud manager interface. There are multiple instance types available to make any app or service flexible and scalable. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up a VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. You can set up your Linodes in a data center nearest you with their latest opening in Mumbai in July 2019. If you need assistance, 24-7, 365 friendly support is available by phone or support ticket. Visit the URL on the screen right now to get started with $20 in credit you can use towards setting up your very own Linode. There are Linux instance types available for as low as $5 a month. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys another example. This is another command we haven't gone over yet. We will go over this, so don't worry too much about this command. It's a pretty easy command. We'll get to it in a future video. But it's the find command. And, and this is a good command to use to understand you know, why you might want to separate standard error and uh, standard output. So the find command allows me to find a file. So I'm going to search in the root of the file system. And then I'm going to do dash name. I want to search by name. And I want any file that, so anything, star means anything, and then dot log. So I want to find any file with the name ends in dot log, or it's anything dot log. And again, I'm searching in the beginning of the file system. Let's see what happens. Permission denied, permission denied, permission denied. I'm seeing a bunch of errors here. So any output that would be valid to me, output that I would actually care about, is going to be buried within all of these errors. So what can I do about that? Now, sometimes you could simply do sudo to run as root. Now, you shouldn't run as root just to hide errors. That's lazy. And we shouldn't use root or sudo unless we absolutely need to. But in this case, um, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is actually capture standard error and send it to a special place. I'm going to send it to purgatory because if there's something I don't want, I should probably send it to purgatory. That's probably a good place for it. So to do that, I'm going to send it to a special place, but I want it only standard error. That's designated by a two, which I will get to in a moment. But I'm going to do two in front of the greater than symbol. There's no space there, but there is a space after. And I'm going to go to a special place, dev null. So basically what I'm saying is execute the find command. I want to start searching at the very beginning of the root file system. Of course, I'm not going to have permission to see everything there. I want to search by name, anything start that ends in .log. I'm going to capture standard error, which is designated by two, and redirect that to slash dev slash null, which is basically purgatory. Anything that you move or copy into dev null is never seen nor heard from again. So I'll press enter. Well, look at that. My output is a lot better. I'm not seeing all those errors. It's not that the errors don't exist. They do. I'm just sending them to purgatory. I'm sending them to slash dev slash null so that they can just not be part of my output. So that's important because maybe as a regular user, I'm not really concerned if there's files I don't have access to. Maybe I'm only concerned with the files I do have access to. And that's all I'm interested in seeing. I don't want to see the errors. So I'm taking all the standard error output and just getting rid of it. And I only want standard output, which is what I am left with. I'll clear the screen. Now I mentioned that standard error is designated by a two. So what do I actually mean by that? So there's three different streams. There's standard input, which is STD in, standard output, which is STD out, then standard error, which is STDERR. Those are the three streams. Standard output, you know, like I mentioned, that's what we've been using all along. Use ls. Well, you're using standard output. It's presenting something to the screen. It's showing you something in standard output. Standard error, like I mentioned, is output, but it's error output. Standard input is anything that is coming in or going in. It's just basically input, uh, just like the name says. You could basically have um, accept input from the user, for example. Maybe you're going to save a variable and you want to capture their input into a variable. You're going to take standard input and save it. 
So that's input coming in. So your keyboard is practically input. You're inputting it into the computer. It's in, out, or it's, or, or it's an error. It's one of the three. But what it actually is, is we have standard input, like I mentioned, which is a zero. And then you have standard output, which is one. Then you have standard error, which is two. So that's just to give you the number designation for each of those three streams. So when you're writing a program, you're going to refer to it by number. So when I ran that find command, I knew that two is standard error, and there it is. I'm taking two, and I'm putting it into slash dev slash null. So what I could do instead is I could do this. I could say two, and I want to do errors.txt. So I'm saying, okay, for all the errors, Put those in this file, but show me the actual output. So I'll press enter. The output's the same, standard output's the same here because it's showing me the files that actually match my search query. But I also have an errors file here too. What's inside that? And as you would expect, all the errors that I didn't see are in this file. And why that matters is maybe you want to run a program and you want any errors that program generates to be in its own file so that way you can look at the file later and troubleshoot those errors so you could capture the errors, but you still want to see the output. And you could go in any direction. You could basically use one for standard output and you could capture only that. So you could basically do the reverse and I could do one and then I could say success because those are going to be successful lines. And we see all the errors because we didn't redirect standard error, but we did redirect the standard output. So if I do cat success, we see only the successful lines, but the errors were printed to the screen, right? So clear the screen again. And a quick note about the echo command. I, I did mention it. I can't believe I didn't go over that earlier in the video series. Uh, totally forgot about this. That one, uh, shame on me, but echo, I'll give you an example. Hello world, echoes hello world. It just basically echoes anything in quotes. And then, um, as I mentioned before, we have the special variable. Echo is used for variables, like showing you, showing you the contents of a variable. And the dollar sign question mark is just the output, uh, or actually the return value of the previous command. In this case, is zero, which is a success. I just wanted to mention echo real quick because it probably doesn't deserve its own video, but it's something that we're going to be using as the series continues. But in regards to standard input, output, and error in these streams, I think you should have a general idea how that works. What I recommend that you do is basically practice with redirecting output, redirecting errors, appending to files, and just play with this and see what you can discover because that's the best way to learn. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Um, it is one of those concepts that can be a little challenging at first, but I think the way that I explained it should uh, definitely help you understand um, that at least focus on standard output and standard error. Standard input is basically anything you're inputting into the machine, so you're also using that all the time too, but focus on standard output, standard error, because those are the two most important things, and I think the um, understanding will come if you don't already understand that. So in the next video, I'm going to show you guys about variables, so stay tuned, and I should have that uploaded very soon. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.